Welcome everyone, Renfail here once again, and we are back with the latest Lord of the Rings online guide. And today we're diving into the ultimate cooking and farming guide. For those of you who like to get into the dirt, get into the oven, get a little sweat on, fry up some nice crispy bacon. It's a great time to be a cook and a farmer here in Lord of the Rings online. And if you've never done this before, there's no better place to be than the Shire, because that's where a lot of the best farmlands are. But there's a lot going into being a cook and a farmer. It's one of the funnest combination of crafting you can do. Uh, the, the vocation that you would want to pick if you were going to be doing this um, would be to come in and actually do the yeoman um, uh, vocation which gives you cooking and farming, as well as tailoring, which I'm not going to deal with because I don't need to do tailoring because I have that on other characters. But the main thing is being a cook and having the farming ability and being able to um, leverage both of those to your advantage. And of course, within the Shire, we have access to the superior oven here, which is going to be important as we get into uh, the later recipes, which we'll talk about in today's episode. But in the meantime, we got to get to the intro, and we actually got to talk about farming and crafting and a whole bunch of other stuff. But before we do, this is the part of the video where I say, hey, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update as I continue to do guides for Lord of the Rings Online, Star Wars Zero Republic, all the other RPGs, MMORPGs, tabletop games, and things that we play here on the channel. And also don't forget to check out the other playlists because we do films, TV shows, books, all sorts of other reviews, uh, plus all the stuff I ramble about from time to time. And support if you can. I do get to do this full-time thanks to the support of the community. I'm a little over a year as of this recording, full-time since February of 2022. Thanks to the support of all of our amazing community members. There's memberships here on the channel. You could do a super chat on premieres like this or the live streams. And then after this video has been uploaded, you could do super thanks. Plus, you could do super thanks on any of the YouTube shorts that you see. There's some pre-programmed amounts that you can just pick from down below that YouTube has pre-programmed in. Or you can choose your own. Plug in your own amounts. Plus, we have a Patreon page if you want to get involved with our fantasy book series, Tabletop Game of Point and Click Game. That's what I work on with my wife and my brother. In the meantime, I will shut up. Uh, links to our Discord are down below. Let's get into the actual cooking and farming part of the video. Now, what is a cook in Lord of the Rings Online? Well, a cook is someone who can make all sorts of fun recipes for player characters in the game. Now, there are a lot of different things that you can create as a cook, starting with cooked food, fortified food, but you can also make ingredients which go into other recipes. There's also fish preparation, but you can also make, and this is very important, trail food, strong drinks, menstrual loot strings. And we can get into stuff beyond this. You can make uh, the old campfire kits, which don't really matter anymore. You can make decorations for homes like the breakfast table, um, lore master pet food, which isn't really useful uh, unless you're going to be getting into you know end game stuff, but it does allow you to do some uh, buffs to your pets. Um, and just a whole bunch of other stuff, which is really, really cool. You can get into guild recipes too, which uh, we don't have to talk about for now. And there's also the Matham Society recipes, uh, which are faction-based uh, recipes. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of stuff, to put it shortly. Um, so let's talk about, first and foremost, uh, cooked food. So cooked food are going to be things that uh, remove wounds, poisons, and so on and so forth, but also give you a power and morale regeneration and non-combat morale and power regen. They have varying lengths of um, duration, you know, 10 minute for the base stuff, looking at the very basic apprentice stuff, and then if you make the superior hard biscuits, you only know, get 15. But, you know, going up to, say, the Westfold stuff, um, you know, making bilberry pies, you know, the base is um, that, and then you could still get the 15 minutes for it, but the, you know, the regen is much, much higher from there. So that's the essence of cooked food, um, but then we get into also the fortifying food, which are things that add resistance ratings um, to various things, so like fear resistance in that one, wound resistance from that, mushroom soup as an example, adding poison resistance. So that's, you know, fortifying food giving you resistances. Then there's trail food. Now trail food is what actually adds to your stats. So starting off at the very basic level, you get, you know, plus four to something, plus four to your will, plus four to your, you know, plus three to your vitality, so on and so forth. Shire pudding, doing plus four fate, but then look in the superior version. But then we get into, say, the Westfold, 
Um, and you can look at trail food and you'll get more bonuses, better stats, 90 will as an example. Um, and, and these can last for 30 minutes. Um, so quite a bit of a uh, bonus going on there for the fortified food as uh, for the trail food, I should say. Then there's strong drinks because you can make ale and this is nothing more than a role play tool. If you like to drink, your character can get various levels of, of inebriated in this game. There's some really awesome um, visual effects and sound effects that happen when you start to get a little tipsy. And there are various levels of being tipsy in this game to the point where you can actually get so tipsy that you uh, end up waking up in a strange place without your pants. Um, <laughs> you, you literally get teleported. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah. Um, Lore Master Pet Foods, we already talked about. Um, there's also getting into your, into beverages. Um, you can make teas and coffees, which in this case, coffee uh, gives you an out-of-combat run speed. The smooth flavor of this brew goes well with the second meal of the morning. So um, that's a great way to um, add additional... Um, just little role play elements to the game that also have some stat bonuses. So that in an essence, that's again, in an essence, are the things that you can make as a cook. The menstrual loot strings are a nice little touch as well. Um, these are little buff things that you can give for your menstrual. So this gives a minus five healing threat as an example. Um, this is a minus seven healing threat. Um, so, I mean, you can look through here um, and, and, you know, lore master food, as I mentioned, Different types of foods give different types of buffs, so you can just take a look at those and choose if you were going to make those for your friends. Um, having played a cook for quite some time now, I've never found, like, if you're going to be selling this on the broker, really people are mostly interested in the um, cooked food, fortified food, mostly the trail food. Um, strong drinks are mostly for role play, um, as are um, things like pipeweed, which we'll get into later on, because that's part of farming. Anyway, that is the essence of being a cook. Before we get into crafting, though, we have to talk about the various tiers of cooking and why that might be important. All right, so one of the most important components to cooking, and this is the same for kind of any crafting uh, profession out there, but we're specifically talking about cooking today, is that you have to have a device of some type, whether it's a forge or a workbench, or in this case, we need an oven to create our recipes. And the reason I'm in the Shire and Mickle Delving in particular is because this is where we have um, a superior oven. Now we don't actually, well, we'll get into this another later. There's superior farms in the Shire as well, but those are over in Hobbiton. Um, but the superior oven happens to be located right here in Mickle Delving. So you notice right now that I can't actually make the hard biscuits because I'm not near an oven. But if I approach the oven, you're going to watch this go from red to green. And that means I've now entered into the range of the device that I need to use in order to cook this recipe. Back it away, it goes red. So you'll notice if we get deeper into the... Um, into the recipes, like let's look at the supreme tier. It says facility required superior oven. Now this happens to be a superior oven, so I can actually craft this recipe here. But if you were to go to say, you know, I'm talking off the top of my head because I can't remember if this if this is where it's at or not. But like Brie, for anything, Brie might not have a superior oven in the crafting hall, and so you would have to go find a superior oven to be able to cook those recipes for the supreme tier and that's just a normal leveling process throughout the game when you start off everything requires the basic things but as you get deeper into things you'll have to um, find superior ovens also when you start off in the normal areas like there might just there might only be a novice cook and they only sell the novice recipes and if you want the expert cook recipes you're going to need to find your way to mickle delving or somewhere where there is an expert cook now, obviously, we've talked about this in the Ultimate Crafting Guide episode. You can buy your recipes off of the NPCs here, or you can go straight into the Lotro store and just buy the recipes with Lotro points. But if you're doing it the old school way and you actually want to buy them for coin, you need to, you would need to make your way to Mickle Delving as an example and uh, find Jewel Underhill as an example and buy your recipes from her. So very important to understand um, that when you're working with the ovens, you have to find a superior oven. The other thing to pay attention to is in terms of recipes. Some of the recipes are going to rely upon simple things that you can buy from the cook. 
So, chicken eggs, as an example. If I'm not mistaken, I could buy chicken eggs straight from her. And we could drop down the filter here and go straight to just crafting ingredients and go through. So, bag of salt, chicken eggs, these are things that we can buy straight from her. Cut of mutton, cut of beef, bottles of water, these are things we can buy from them. Other things have to be created. So, as an example, um, blackberry pie filling requires bunches of blackberries and drops of honey. And you'll notice when you hover over these, one of these will say this ingredient is sold by suppliers and profession vendors so if we look over on the right hand side of the shop we actually see drop of honey drop of fine clover honey drop of wildflower honey those are the various tiers of honey that the vendor sells for us but the black a bunches of blackberries we can only get from farming or from harvesting them in the wild it's much superior to farm them yourself which is why the yeoman vocation is the best vocation if you're going to be comboing the crafting and farming because you'll be able to make all of the ingredients that you're going to need to be able to make all of these recipes as a cook now it gets way more complex depending on what you're going to be creating um, and especially as you get deeper into the recipes we'll start to see things um, that require multiple things um, so as an example, the Limbus bread requires a cup of winty barley flour, a cup of fresh cream, and a cup of flying clover honey. The, hover, the honey and the cream we can buy from the merchant, but the winter barley flour we have to actually make. And that's something that is a multi-ingredient recipe because you start with... Well, we'll get into that when we get into the farming, but you have to get the seeds first, and then you have to take the seeds and get the barley, and then you have to go from there, and it's just it's a whole other ball game <laughs> lots of different stuff that goes on and then getting into um you know the um the well this is a perfect example so see how it says winter barley flour here and then this uh, where did it go and then this requires the winter barley so one of those is the barley the other one is the barley flour so there's multiple in stages of the war of the barley that you can get into it's it is what it is so this one as an example um cream of barley soup requires milk which you can buy from the vendor but the barley has to be farmed uh, suitable for muscle grain but then you also have to make beef stock right so how do you make beef stock well we can actually go in here and if we just want to search for this we could do beef and then look right there bowl of beef stock how do we make beef stock well we need golden shire taters a flank of beef which we can buy from the broker and then a bottle of water so in order to even make what we were just looking at first we would have to make the beef stock get the winter barley, you know, buy all these ingredients from the broker, combine all these things together, and only then, after we'd done all of that, could we make the cream of barley soup. So, again, starting at the very basic recipe, like making hard biscuits, um, this would be very easy to make because we only need some spring barley flour, some chicken eggs, a bottle of water, uh, but then we get deeper into things and further into you know the recipes higher up levels um, it starts to become more and more complex to make things and it can start to take quite a bit of time um, to make things um, and also you know looking at the the ales and the beers and stuff you know you'll need hops you'll need barley mash pinches of ale yeast lots of different things to make things and then the ingredients this might be a simple one where you just need some yellow onions which are harvested from the field to combine with some pork shanks and a bottle of water so again lots of different things going on some of the ingredients that you need you can get from the shop but other things you need to either harvest in the wild or farm them and i'm going to recommend farming 100 percent of the time because it's way easier to get them and you can get them in bulk as opposed to trying to find them in the wild because they're a lot uh, a lot a lot less in terms of um quantity in the wild okay so we've kind of finished up with the essence of cooking right those are the basics of cooking now if we want to get into the the fun part of this it's going to be farming so we're going to run over to the farms that are right outside of the cooking area here in the shire and remember well remember how we talked about how the difference between a regular oven and a superior oven this being the superior oven and i dropped a little tidbit about how there are regular fields here in mickle delving but the superior fields are out there over in hobbiton that's going to be important for later on in the in the depths of your farming throws because you'll be able to start off right here outside of pickle delving but once you get into the upper tiers of uh, farming you're going to have to go um, out there to hobbiton and use the superior fields so this is a field build my field 
um, you can crop, uh, excuse me, you can plant a crop anywhere in this field. So if we look at our basic recipe, um, which I don't have any apprentice, I need to see if I, I may have to go get some, um, I may not have any ingredients on me. Okay, so let's look at uh, apprentice for now. Let's say I wanted to make some grains. Uh, well, that's that's the that's the field. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So, if I go outside of here, it says facility required farmland, and then the moment I get in here, it goes green because this is a farmland. Anytime you see this before you, this is a farmland. So there's one here, and there's another field. If I could actually control my mouse here, there's gosh, goodness gracious, there's some weirdness going on with my mouse control. So there's a field here. There's also another field over here, and these are where you can plant. Okay. Now this is the essence of farming. All fields look like these two areas. They might be different dimensions. There's also another one over here, but these all count as farmlands. And so this is where you grow your crops. So how do we grow our crops? Well, you need ingredients just like you do to cook. So if I wanted to say, make some vegetables, if I wanted to get some fresh carrots, it says I'm gonna need a fresh carrot crop. So remember, fresh carrots are the ingredient that's used in recipes. So if I wanna make fresh carrots, I need a fresh carrot crop. So how do I get a fresh carrot crop? Well, I get a fresh carrot crop from a carrot field. And what do I need to make a carrot field? Well, I need an apprentice crop seed, a bucket of water, a handful of fertilizer, and if I wanna do a crit version, I would get a pile of Rivendell soil. Right? And you'll notice that every single recipe, when it comes to vegetables as an example, there's the field and then the yield. Mushroom, mushroom field. Yellow onion, yellow onion field. So it's always field and yield, field and yield, field and yield. Same thing if you go over here to, um, say, pipeweed, um, which we're going to talk about here a little bit. Sweet lobelia field, here's the fields, and then here's the yields. Right? So... Um, Field, here's the spring barley, spring barley field, bundle of spring barley. So field and yield, field and yield. Always think about that. Here's the flowers, field and yield. Notice that the yield requires you to use a workbench. It could be any workbench. Um, there's workbenches back there in the crafting area. There's also a workbench right here. And there's a farmhand who sells the ingredients that we need to actually plant our fields. So... Let's say that we want to make um, some, actually I, I know what we can do because I can go back to my cook and I can see here because I know I'm low on one of these types of barleys. Where was it here? Prepared north down, no, no, that wasn't it. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Cream of barley, no, that wasn't it. Winter barley? Winter barley, I may be low on winter barley. Oh no, I have tons of winter barley. <laughs> I just haven't produced it yet. So let's just start with the basic recipe here um, and give you guys an idea of what we can do. Um, so let's make some spring barley. So it says here, in order to do that, to make the field, I need an apprentice crop seed, a, lovely day. a bucket of water, and a handful of fertilizer. So let's start off with the apprentice crop seed. We're going to buy one. And then we're going to get a bucket of water, which is going to be somewhere. Let's just look at um, ingredients here. Bucket of water. And then we need a handful of fertilizer. Right there. Those are the core ingredients that we would need. Now, if we want to, we can add a pile of Riverdale soil to get the crit version. And I would like to do so. So we're going to go down here and we're going to look for a um, pile of Riverdale soil. Which Does he sell it here? Right there. Pile of Rivendell soil. Okay. So now that I've got the core ingredients to what I need to make, we're going to come back over here to the field. I'm going to get off my little pig mount here. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we click this to make the crit version of the recipe. The crit version of the recipe is going to give us a well-tended spring barley field, which is going to give us a better yield than the normal version. Now remember, you can only do the crit version of a recipe if you have 
mastered the tier that you're in. And if you haven't watched the Ultimate Crafting Guide episode, I would highly urge you to go watch my Ultimate Crafting Guide uh, episode to understand how to level through the various tiers, because we're not really going to talk about it here. Um, notice that East Minute I haven't mastered yet, so I'm still working on the mastery. But if you have mastered the tier, as is the case here, you can use the crit recipes to get a better yield. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And we're going to go ahead and click make. And you're going to notice here, we're going to scroll down on here and we're going to watch him. He's going to he's going to throw seed down and he's going to make a little patch. He's going to chuck the seed down and boom, we have a well-tended spring barley field. Now from here, this operates just like a harvestable. A matter of fact, if I turn on the uh, track crops, you'll notice that up on my mini-map, I'm actually tracking the well-tended spring barley field, so I can actually track that as a harvestable. Then you simply right-click it, and he will harvest that. And he will now have in his inventory 12 fair spring barley crop. Um, uh, what did it actually, yeah, so he just, he just harvested 12 fair spring barley crops. Then we can come back to the workbench, and we can right click on the workbench or in this case just boom we already have it open we can click on the bundle of spring barley and we can choose to make now i could just make one or i could make all of these but if this is the case let's go ahead and just make one for now so you understand what i'm doing here we've made we have the spring barley crops and then boom i have made four bundles of spring barley which went down here because i already have a stack of those and then if i wanted to make the whole bundle you know if i wanted to make all of these i would just click make all and he would proceed to make all all that he has available um, at his disposal and he would go from there all right so that's the essence of working in a field however there's also a little trick i can show you to speed up the process if you want to get the most out of your time so what am i talking about here well here's a little trick that you can do so let's go ahead and go back to the spring barley field now here's the most important thing you notice earlier before I buy the ingredients. When I harvest when I when I sowed my seeds, it created a patch, which I could then harvest. Those patches have a limited time that they are available to be harvested. So if you don't harvest it, they go away. So you essentially will waste your your um, seeds. But you could get a certain amount of them done before they respawn. And this is a, a tip that a lot of people will use to speed up this process. So I'm gonna buy because you can do four at any given time. You can har you can sow four fields and harvest four fields before they disappear. So here's how you would do that. You would buy four apprentice spring seeds, crop seeds, four buckets of water. Let's go back in the crafting ingredients. Four handfuls of fertilizer. And then four piles of Rivendell soil. Okay. Now we're going to go back over to the field. And the key here is that you can't plant them on top of each other. They have to be planted slightly uh, away from each other. So the way that I do this uh, is I'm going to click make all, sow the first field, turn a little bit, sow the second field, turn a little bit, sow the third field, turn a little bit, sow the fourth field, turn a little bit, sow, and, and, and harvest. So I'm going to click make all. You'll see what I'm doing here in a second. So sow the first one, move a little bit. Do the next one, move a little bit. Do the next one, boom, we've got four fields. And then we just right click, right click, right click, and finally right click. And that is in essence the quick way to go around getting a huge chunk of crop at your disposal um, because we now have um, a whole bunch of bundles of spring barley to get into. So that's a trick for those of you who want to really speed up the uh, farming process to get the most out of your yields. Um, and then you just take all that back to the workbench and proceed to go from there. Now, no hobbit worth their salt is going to become a farmer without eventually making pipeweed. Pipeweed is purely a role play component in Lord of the Rings Online. If you've never done pipeweed in this game, um, different types of pipeweed have different smoke animations. So like if you watch the films by Peter Jackson and you see Gandalf and Bilbo 
you know, so on and so forth, blowing like ships and little birds and, and things of that nature. That's what pipe weed is in this game. Um, anytime, I mean, you could smoke a regular pipe. If I remember correctly, it's just smoke. You'll pull out a pipe and you'll just start to smoke. And it's just basic smoke. You'll notice it right there, just some basic smoke effect. But if you have pipe weed, you get some cool uh, smoke animations. And there are a lot of different pipe weeds in the game. Some of the pipe weeds you can only get through quests. Um, others you can um, craft and harvest as a farmer. So we're actually going to do some pipe weed here this morning so that you can see what that looks like. Because this is a fun component of farming and it's purely for roleplay purposes there are no stats associated with pipe weed uh, it's just something that's fun to do um, so if I wanted to make um, long bottom leaf I would need to make a long bottom leaf field right so I would need to come in here and you know buy the necessary ingredients and in this case um, you know we would use the apprentice crop seeds uh, oh, excuse me, not not apprentice crop seeds. We want apprentice pipeweed seeds. So in this case, we want pipeweed seeds. And then we get some buckets of water. I'm going to buy a few because I want to make different types here to show you guys what these are all like. And then we need some handfuls of fertilizer. And one more pile of rivendell soil. And then we'll come back over here and we're going to do different types so that you guys can see what I'm talking about with the different animations. So let's start off with a... Long bottom leaf field. Go and harvest that. Then we're going to do a rushlight field. Harvest that. Then we'll do a south lynch field. Harvest that. And a sweet lobelia field. We will then harvest that. Then we're going to go back to the workbench. Like so. And then we're going to say, I want to make a pouch of long bottom leaf. Pouch of Rushlight. Pouch of South Lynch. And a pouch of Sweet Lobelia. Alright. Now those are going to go into your inventory. And in this case we have these four pouches that we've made. Um, four different pouches of each type. Now I need to get a little... Ana Let's see if I can do this from this angle so that you guys can see the character animation. So, we're going to try the long bottom leaf. And we're looking for the smoke effect is what we're looking at. The VFX from the smoke. So, he starts smoking. And it doesn't matter, you know, we're kind of blocking his face. But we're mostly looking for the, the animation that comes afterwards. Finish smoking and... That is one smoke ring, is what we got out of that. That was the long bottom leaf. So now let's try the rush light. What does the rush light look like? And these are the most basic entry level ingredients, right? So these have the most basic um, uh, animations that you would see in the game. And this one has also one smoke ring. What about South Lynch? They all have the same animation? This is something I don't actually know, because I haven't done this in a very long time. So I don't remember if you only get... Um, oh, he's not showing the animation for that one. Hold up. I may have triggered it too soon. These might all be just the basic recipes. Might only give you one smoke ring. We might have to make a more complex one to show some of the more complex smoke rings. Oh, that one was just a big puff of smoke. So that was the South Lynch. Now let's try the Sweet Lobelia. Oh, that one had two. So that was the Sweet Lobelia. So you can see we saw a little bit of a variation. We had two that just did a single. The third one was just a big puff of smoke. And then that one had two smoke rings. That, in essence, is pipeweed. 
Now, again, the deeper you get in, the more complex the pipe weed you make, the, the cooler the animations can be. Let me see if I can make, um, I haven't done this in a long time. Let's, let's take a look at some of the West, uh, I don't, I might not have Westfold. Hold up a second. I actually need to look at what I have access to. Supreme Pipeweed, which have some really crazy names. Oh, I wonder if I can buy it or if I have to go up to the, I might not be able to do it here. I might have to go up to, um. Yeah, he's he's not going to sell it here. We may have to go up to the um, the other guy. So with that being said, this might be the perfect opportunity for us to run up to the superior farms and take a look at what he sells up there. So without further ado, we're going to take a ride out to Hobbiton and take a look at the superior farms over there. All right, to get to the superior farms, you just head north out of Hobbiton, past the Bywater Bridge and the Water Wheel. Go up the hill slightly here, and you're going to see them on the mini-map up to my right already. And we would just, boop, tuck in here, and voila, we have the first of the superior farms. Now, we could talk to the expert farmhand here and see what he has available for us. All right, what do you got for me, sir? Look at your ingredients, and let's look what he has in terms of... He won't have this. He won't have the crazy stuff here. But let's look and see if we can get wizard's fire. What does this one need? Wizard's fire seed. What seeds does he have? Ah, I can make an old Toby field. Okay, let's make some old Toby since I already have. <laughs> I already have that at my disposal. So let's go ahead and make some old Toby. That's a recognizable name that most people will remember. Old Toby. Let's go ahead and harvest that down. There's a workbench over here. Pouch of old Toby. And now we could have a puff puff of the old Toby. Let's see what the animation is for the old Toby. That's a huge puff of smoke with a big ring around it as it comes out. So that's some of the uh, enhanced pipe weeds. The other pipe weeds, you notice how they have these really weird, um, like we get into the deep, um, you need this uh, fungos fuzzy leaf pipe weed seed. Um, those are harder to get, and it's been a while since I've done pipe weed, but if I'm not mistaken, you get those as, as an example. You notice here when I... When I completed old Toby's crops, look on the bottom left, it says you have acquired Dragon's Breath Seed. So in order to make some of these more uh, crazy types of pipe weed, you get those from making the ones that you can make, like old Toby, um, which you can get from buying from him. You know, in, in the case of this, to old Toby's feed, we would get the expert pipe weed seed, and then we would end up getting the dragon's breath seed as a crit result. Um, it says a type of crossbreed seed used by expert farmers to grow dragon's breath pipe weeds. So we can actually take a look at some of these, you know, more crazy pipe weeds. Um, this in the case, a wizard fire field. It said a type of crossbreed used by master farmers to grow wizard's fire pipe weed. So you would need to be creating, you know, regular old craziness in the master tier to get these as a crit recipe now i never got into pipe weed beyond the artisan level which is why i don't really have anything beyond that so but it just depends on how deep you want to go into the pipe weed um craziness because there's all sorts of specialty weeds that you can make um and this is just me scratching the surface for those of you who want to understand a little bit more about the pipe weed and how that works and all the visual effects and everything else so in essence that is pipe weed farming ladies and gentlemen it's just another aspect of farming but instead of making ingredients for recipes you're just doing something for role play purposes in any case everyone that is a wrap on our farming and cooking episode for lord of the rings online so for those of you out there who like to craft food and make cool stuff with ingredients that you 
bring forth from the ground with your own two hands. If you've got a green thumb, then this is what you're going to want to play. The uh, vocation, again, is called the Yeoman Vocation, which makes you a cook and a farmer. Um, you can obviously do cooking and farming anywhere in the game, paying attention to the fact that some places need superior ovens and some things need superior uh, farms. I think that the Shire is the best place to do it because... The superior farms, or superior croplands are right here in Hobbiton, and then right down the road is Mickle Delving with a superior oven. It's a short, literally, you could do a swift travel between the two. And I think that the Shire is just a great place to do this. One of the reasons I made my uh, halfling, my, my hobbit minstrel, a cook and a farmer is because it just felt apt to have the the guy who likes the munchies and needs his second breakfast to be the one um, making my food for all of my characters. And that's essentially what this guy has become over the years. This is the character I play with my brother's uh, uh, Hobbit Warden. But he has become my cook, and I just send uh, all these ingredients to all of my characters. So um, all the foods and stat foods, if you'll notice, like my lore master and my hunter and everybody else, I'm running around, and I've, I'm literally running around with, like, apple pies and all the stuff for my own character. Um, because, and by the way, carrot cake. Now I'm so hungry right now for carrot cake. Carrot cake is, like, one of my favorite snacks with coffee. Oh, but... I love the cook. I think it's one of the most uh, relaxing crafting professions in the game. It's really easy because you could just go farm everything yourself. It's a great combo for those of you who like that kind of stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed this uh, episode of my Lotro uh, guide series. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. And as always, if you can support, please do, because I get to do this full-time thanks to the support of our community members. So you can start off with memberships on the channel. They start at $2.99 a month and go up from there. You can do one-off donations in the form of super chats on live streams and premieres. On uploaded videos and YouTube shorts, you can do super thanks. And of course, we have a Patreon page. The links are down below along with our Discord links. So hopefully we see you over at the Patreon page, over in our Discord channel. Maybe you'll come play Lotro with us or Star Wars or Republic or Valheim or any of the other games that we play on a week-to-week -week basis. So thanks, everybody. Until next time, stay safe and happy cooking and farming in Lord of the Rings Online.